So if you've watched my videos up until now, you'll notice that what I've done a lot of is a lot of technical aspects of photography, aperture, ISO, shutter speed, things like that. But there's actually one thing I neglected to mention, which is actually the most important thing you need to think about when you're being a photographer, and it really is the thing that separates you out from everyone else, and that is composition. David Baxter here and welcome to today's video. Now, what I've been doing a lot so far is doing a lot of technical videos in terms of, you know, what's ISO, what's aperture, what's shutter speed, what's in my camera bag, things like that. Now, I've done that intentionally because that's just something a lot of people always like and it's always a good thing to learn to start off with and of course it is really important to know the technical side of photography if you want to get great photographs. But of course, like anything you do, it's not the equipment at the end of the day. You're not going to have the, just because you've got the best camera in the world, the best lenses in the world, the best lighting in the world, doesn't mean that you're going to take great photographs. The real skill for me comes in composition, and that's going to be talking about today. Now, composition is so important because composition really just means how you structure a shot. And it's about everything you do in terms of how you light it, where you put the subject, how, how much of a depth of field you have, and that's the difference to get a great photograph. If you've ever been out yourself, for example, and you've seen like a great scene and it's like a great sunset or great line and you've taken that shot, then you might look at it later on and go, well, how does that not look as good as it was when it was in front of me? Now, yes, that may be some technical things, but I bet more often than not, it's going to be the composition. You probably just didn't pick the best composition for that shot. Now, if you don't know what composition is, what I'm going to do is show you some examples on the PC and I'll talk through them now. So to explain composition, what I've got here is I've got actually four photographs up and what they are, they're all the same subject, um, however they're all in different composition and as I'll talk through each one of them and how they differ in each time. Um, the subject base is, as you can see here, it's my fiance in a snowy day uh, back in Stirling a few years ago and right off the bat, the first thing any sort of composition is going to be the most basic thing is, well this photo's in portrait mode. If not held, the, it's not in landscape mode, the, photo, the camera wasn't held horizontally, so right away it's in a portrait mode and as a portrait that's a pretty standard thing to do. Another thing as well is the subject itself, so the subject's right in the middle of the picture. So I mean again, affecting composition would be if I sort of put her maybe to the left of the picture or the right of the picture, which some of the other examples I'll come to in a moment. Another thing as well, of course, is depth of field. So depth of field is a really big one in terms of composition. So you can see here at the front, we've got this a little bit in focus here and the background is well blown out. It's a nice shallow depth of field. If you actually zoom in a little bit here, you'll see that actually the lichen on the, the bridge here is still slightly out of focus. You can see that her arm and upward in her face is obviously well in focus, still nice and sharp, but this is actually still slightly blurred out, but it's not terribly blurred out. Obviously a lot of snowflakes here as well that are in different split paces places too, they're obviously a little blurred out as well. So yeah, as you can see here, see this one here, the composition, it's a very sort of standard one, very sort of classic portrait, shallow depth of field and a centre subject. Another thing as well to think about here is well, how much sort of sky and how much sort of bridge would I want in this shot. So for example, if we bring it down the way, first of all, and maybe we said like this and we want to show a lot of the bridge and her head's are at the top of the photo, that's what it looked like. Okay, it's a wee bit left of centre there, but the point is there's still a lot of wall here, not a lot of sky. So yeah, it looks a bit different, it's not too bad, but I think it looks better with a bit more sky in it. And so if we do it the other way around then, and we actually see that if we crop up the way and sort of do it this way instead and show a lot of sky, I actually like that one a bit more. I prefer the original one still because I like the detail of the wall, but you can see here, for example, in this one, we've just got the snow at the bottom here now. It's now just nice and plain and white. And again, that sort of background all sort of blurred out. The only colour really in the shot here is the jacket, the hat, the scarf, things like that. Now, if we jump onto another photo of this example, so as I say again, this is the exact same subject, exact same day, but obviously now we've moved it around a little bit now. So this one here again, still in portrait mode. Yes, she's still again um, pretty much centered in the shot, but you can see her now it's a lot different because at the start, we've got now full body. Now we can actually see her head to toe. We're not just showing the sort of upper half of her body. Another thing we have here as well is this bridge. Now the depth of field is coming up again, and we can see this is all blurred out in the foreground of the shot. This sort of blurred in and the leading lines leading up to her in the middle of the picture. If we zoom in a little bit as well, what you can see here is you can see again how it's nice again, sharp round about here. Again, this is all sort of blurred out and the bokeh effect with the snowflakes as well. And you can see here on the right hand side, we zoom in just a little bit more. Again, you can see all the sort of snowflakes that were clearly in sort of line with her in that depth of field are all nicely sharp. There's plenty of other ones in the background are nicely out of focus. So this one here, as you see, obviously it's a lot more, say, the head to toe shot, the composition is on there. For example, in this one here, I could have kept a lot of it more in focus because there's a lot more details in there in the background. I didn't need to have a shallow depth of field. 
There's also a lot here as well in terms of you can see these trees a little bit in the background, but of course what I could have done there is I could have made sure again that they were a bit more in focus. Yeah, it was a snowy day and it wasn't a lot of visibility there, but you still could have gotten a little bit sharper rather than blowing them out. Now, if we jump to this one here, this one here again, just it's again just similar to the last one. It's pretty much almost the same shot in terms of where she was standing, but now she's looking off a little bit of the shot, and again, it's really filling the frame a lot more. I've got her filling the frame. Whereas we jump back to this one, you see, yes, it's nice head to toe, but this one here really is nice focus up in the top half of her body, her face, the hat, the, the sort of the the jacket on there, and her gloves. It's a lot more closer and tighter shot. Again, similar to the first one, we could look at end up cropping this down and again just sort of bring it onto her a little bit more. So it's just in her, she really does fill that whole frame, which isn't too bad. I don't mind that one, but I still I'm not a big fan of cropping too much just because you're losing a lot of uh, pixels and you can lose a lot of resolution. But to be fair, if you really are just slight little touches and things like that, you're always best to do it if it's that's the difference between changing the composition and not. Now the final one I'll show you on here is the first one I say it's a landscape one. So this one, you know, the camera's horizontal again, again similar to the one we've got the, the wall in the sort of middle here and her just again sort of now she's more left of centre this one, this shot. And again we're getting a bit more of this detail I zoomed in a minute ago, you don't need to zoom in as much as see here, there's the wall in the background, there's some of the snowflakes that are sharp and obviously the other one's a kind of bokeh effect. There isn't really too much going in the background here at all, again it's all nicely blown out, but again she's out looking off of shot as well. And this is again all the things you to think out as I say about where we place this. Now obviously as I placed her in here but if again we look at maybe sort of cropping this in I could really make her even more left of centre maybe about there and again that's actually not too bad a shot it's quite nice it maybe actually brings it in so there's not too much sky I quite like the kind of white sky in it but to be fair there's not a lot of the detail in there so that's a sort of nice shot as well but see how again I've sort of changed the composition that shot just by simply cropping it in so if you undo that and jump back out again it's a different shot there's a lot more negative space in this one compared to the crop that I just did. Another thing as well you can think about in composition, of course, in terms of not just where you position your shot, not where it's horizontal, but also in terms as well, in terms of using black and white in colour. Obviously here, I like the colours in the shot, I could, really, I could make this black and white, or what I could even do, even though it's a very common thing you do see, I could have simply made this a lot of this black and white on here in the backgrounds, but kept her completely in colour. So there's a lot of different things you can do, but as I say, the main thing really to always think about in composition is that just, again, where are you placing your subject? Are you doing it horizontal, first of all? Are you doing a landscape shot or a portrait one? And you're placing the subject right in the centre of the shot, or is it left of centre, right of centre? Are you filling the frame with your subject, or are you just kind of keeping them as in this one here? It's about two thirds, um, well, in terms of height anyway, sort of two thirds, but actually in terms of the shot itself, there's actually a lot of negative space here. And negative space is thing I quite like to use, but again, as I say, you could always bring this in a bit more and let's cut out that negative space. Let's maybe just kind of put the shot about here and that way we're keeping it a lot more tighter in on her. We've got a lot more just its bridge, the wall, the, her itself, and then the background in the sky. So that's just the things to think about. And like I say, composition is just such an important thing to do. But even if yourself, if all you take away from this video is just think about next time you're taking a photograph of any kind that is, whether it's on your phone, your camera, it doesn't matter what, just think about where you're putting the subject. Are you filling the frame of the subject? Are you putting the left of centre, right of centre? Just think about all those things. That's the first thing to start off with rather than just taking your camera out and just taking a snapshot and that's it. So there's an overview of what composition is. As I say, it's such an important aspect of photography and we've all been there. It's so easy to jump into all the technical aspects. Look at all the reviews and what's the best lens, what's the best camera. But again, that doesn't make you a great photographer. Great photographer is really mastering composition, knowing the composition, getting the right for the subject, recognising good light. These things are all important. And I don't agree with a lot of people out there who think that, oh, you can't learn these things. Yeah, I mean, they're not a checklist, definitely. It's not just something you can sort of just tick off because subject and lights change and depending on the situation you're in, but I definitely think it's something you can learn, get better at. It just takes trial, it takes error, it takes experience and you can definitely get better at it over time. I hope you did enjoy this video and if there's anything else that you struggle with in photography, please leave them in the comments below. If you did like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe and hopefully I shall see you in the next video.